Hello there, greetings and a very good evening to you. A happy Monday and many thanks for tuning in to Rwanda Television News tonight. We do hope you had yourselves a great start to your week. And now, this is what is coming up. President Paul Kagame has stressed that people should make efforts to change mindsets that hinder gender equality. Rwanda has announced plans to source electricity from Uganda. Once again, a very great evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News. To our detailed edition, President Paul Kagame has stressed that people should make efforts to change mindsets that hinder gender equality. The Rwandan head of state made the remarks while officially opening at the 2023 Women Deliver Conference here in Kigali, Rwanda, on Monday. The opening ceremony of the conference with the theme, Spaces, Solidarity and Solutions, was attended by a number of dignitaries, including heads of state. The chair of the board of Women Deliver commended and thanked all who have continued to actively work for gender equality. Ubuntu. I am because you are. Solidarity. I am because you are. We are facing unique sets of challenges since we convened in 2019. We have had COVID. Who would ever thought we'd sit in a big room like this without masks? It was unbelievable. But here we are, the resilience of human spirit. We also call on you to do everything in these coming days to make sure that you bring ideas that will help us to double or triple our efforts as part of, of our solidarity to fight against the climate crisis. We want to make sure that here we are in solidarity with all the women of the world who live and who have faced violence against them. In his remarks, His Excellency President Paul Kagame commended the fact that Rwanda was chosen to host the first Women Deliver Conference to take place on the African soil and also thanked those who worked tirelessly to promote gender equality. He, however, pointed out that there is still much to do in that respect. We must challenge ourselves to do things differently and with a sense of urgency. Commitments which are not followed by action cannot fulfill our promise to build a more just, equitable, and prosperous future for the generations that follow us. Much more remains to be done to tackle biased attitudes about gender, which are deeply embedded in our political, social, and economic systems. All of us share the responsibility to play an active role in changing these negative mindsets. In Rwanda, we have created an enabling environment for women to be equally represented in leadership positions, including in the politics and at all levels. Our priorities are to advance gender equality across all sectors, especially digital and financial inclusion, and to continue challenging traditional gender norms. 
The Rwandan head of state also noted that gender equality is considered when the country's national budget is prepared and that it is also promoted in the family unit while vices like gender-based violence are fought. Also present was Senegal's president, Macky Sall, who identified President Paul Kagame as a champion of gender equality, both on the African continent and beyond, noting that humanity cannot develop if half of its population is ignored. We understand that women are equal to men, gender equality. Without men, women cannot make progress. And without women, men go nowhere. So both sides need to make progress and grow together and at the same pace. Unfortunately, women have been delayed, I mean, just like Africa. In the idea of nations, women have been delayed due to history, due to the dominating mindset and mentality. We must therefore make efforts so that the African woman, Af women in the world, have the same rights, of course. On her part, Ethiopia's president reminded those present of the terrible effects war and conflict have on families, especially women conflict situation, uh, male are the one who suffer most uh, in terms of death, but women uh, are affected disproportionately. Uh, many of the IDPs, refugee camps that we see are filled with women and kids, and um, gender-based violence is rampant. Uh, school, many, many kids are out of school and, uh, you know, health facilities and so on. So the burden is a lot on, on women. This is what I would like uh, to highlight because uh, this is not unique to our country. Unfortunately, we just heard we had these conflict situations in many parts of the world, and uh, we should, of course, come out of this if, if we talk about gender equality and women empowerment. Also participating was Hungary's president, and she told those present that people in her country are being encouraged to have more children because not many are willing to get married and start families. Hungary has lost 10% of its population in the last decades because of low fertility. I was responsible for family affairs for eight years in the government, and uh, we worked very hard on giving the real freedom of choice and enabling women to fulfill their professional dreams and also to, to become mothers. So the fertility rate in Hungary it increased by 25% in 10 years. The number of marriages doubled. So we could really uh, encourage uh, young people to be able to, to, to not to give up on, on families and, uh, on, on, on having children. And that is what I would like to achieve uh, in Hungary in the future as well. For example, in Hungary, if you are a mother of four children, at least or more, you don't ever pay any personal income tax in your life. Uh, so you, you are encouraged to work, but also if you, ha if you are a mother uh, and if you do that both at a time, that then, then you have also financial incentives. Also grandparents can take advantage of the parental leave. Uh, we have a parental leave of three years, but dads can only stay at home with the kids just equally as mothers. So it's up to them to choose. It can be the father. It's not a force, but uh, it, can, it is a real choice. It, they can decide themselves. It really is this encouragement uh, to be able to, to, to fulfill uh, their dreams. The UN representative at the event congratulated Rwanda for coming among the top 10 countries globally when it comes to the promotion of gender equality and different participants called for more funding and policies to promote gender equality. This is the sixth Women Deliver conference to be organized and is being attended by more than 6,000 delegates from 170 countries from all around the world. More than 200,000 people are following the proceedings virtually. Globally, only 155 countries have laws punishing gender-based violence.
Still on the Women Deliver conference, the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, reiterated that women and girls need access to healthcare services, quality education, and having a voice in uh, making decisions that impact them. The First Lady made other remarks during the Women Deliver pre-conference, the power of choice, fostering partnerships to realize bodily autom autonomy on uh, July 17th in Kigali. Samili Wase with the details. In conservative cultures, talking about sex is a taboo. So when you try to Gajou Kahlen, 17 years old, raised a voice on behalf of her peers on the African continent, whose women's bodily autonomy is violated and their health is compromised. Recently, in a social gathering, I just met a former classmate of mine. Right now, she's 16 years old, she's younger than me, but then she has a two-month baby. When I tried to ask her what happened, she just told me that the perpetrator lied to her that if she does sex for the first time, she's not going to get pregnant. This is an example of one child who, is, who got pregnant because of the wrong information that she has about her sexual and reproductive health. If they want to access the contraceptives, like it's going to require parental consent. It's like complete denial to ac for them to access the contraceptives. Yes, policy said that you can access them, but then it requires parental consent. Nation set a goal of achieving full bodily autonomy by 2030. Most of the women whose full power and rights to make decisions about their own bodies are violated are from 57 developing countries, with 50% of all the women who are concerned with this issue. UNFPA Executive Director Dr. Natalia Kanem called for multi-sector and institution collaboration in tackling this alarming issue. Today, 44%, nearly half of women, are not able to make their own choices about their reproductive health, the use of contraception, and whether or not to have sex. UNFPA research is showing that nearly half of pregnancies in this world are unintended, and many of those end up in unsafe abortion. Young women in particular are demanding that tech companies remove abusive, non-consensual images from their platforms, and policymakers must criminalize the use of such images. Thank you for being your sister's keepers. Rwanda's First Lady, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, expressed the need for women and girls to have quality health care services and education, as well as for rights. For women to be healthy, they need strong health systems. A strong health system has optimal services tailored to the population it serves. A strong health system is one that can mobilize populations to protect their own health and their community's wellness too. And a strong system is one that prevents more than it treats through education, through public engagement and encouragement of healthy lifestyles and practices. Such a system catalyzes prolific life choices for men and women. There must be the political will to develop, to deploy all necessary resources to health for all. And this will must give way to appropriate budget allocations, policies and laws, and synchronized efforts across all state branches. Among the 17 sustainable development goals the world has committed to achieve by 2030 include universal access to reproductive health services and the right to make decisions about one's own body. However, one in five countries globally has established laws that limit women and girls from making decisions about their bodies, 57 of which are developing countries. Samili Wase, RTV News. Rwanda has announced plans to source electricity from uh, Uganda. Uh, this was reiterated by the Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Professor Nshuti Manasse, uh, following uh, discussions between uh, Rwanda's uh, Prime Minister, Dr. Edouard Njirene, and the Prime Minister of uh, Uganda, Right Honorable uh, Robina Nabanje. The two leaders applauded the revival of the relations between Rwanda and Uganda which has enabled the increase in trade and cooperation for the benefit of the citizens of both countries, as Right Honorable Robin Nabanja said. I'm here on the invitation by the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda. Um, just bilateral relations. We had a number of discussions on how to strengthen our friendship, our relationship, 
and how to have mutual understanding between the two sister countries on how to implement um, uh, some uh, trade relations, how our people are going to do business between the two sister countries. The officials also deliberated on the implementation of joint projects between the two countries. The State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Professor Shuti Manasi, revealed Rwanda's plan to import cheap and affordable electricity from Uganda. Borders have been reopened and the cooperation is smoothly moving. Uh, there are various projects that we can do together. For example, they have high energy production uh, that we can use at a low cost. The other thing is that we are looking at extending the railway line from Uganda to Rwanda so as to increase the trade and investment. The other thing is the MOUs that were signed between both countries, uh, which are comprised of the things that we are supposed to jointly implement. The relations are good, but we are looking at strengthening it even more because we are brothers, friends and neighbors. Ugandan Prime Minister Right Honorable Robin Nabanje is one of the dignitaries who are in Rwanda to attend the Women Deliver Conference taking place in Kigali. Parliamentarians from the Global Parliamentarians Alliance are joined together for the Women Deliver Conference 2023, which started on Monday. The participants are reiterated on various topics, including the principles of gender equality and health for teenage girls. Adam Squizera with the report. By issue of expensive sanitary equipment for girls, especially sanitary pads, is among of the obstacles on the health of teen girls from the low-income families. Petra Bail, the president of European Parliament Forum, noted that countries should provide a sustainable solution for this issue. So it's so important not to stigmatize girls when they are bleeding, that they really have access to the necessary uh, hygiene products, affordable. And for instance, in, in Austria, it was my initiative that we reduced the, uh, the VAT on menstruation products by half. So it's a little bit cheaper now. The speaker of the Chamber of Deputies in Rwanda, Donatil Mukavarisa, pointed out the role of women in decision-making authorities as one of the main pillars in the development of the principle of gender equality. It is essential to recognize the pivotal role that parliamentarians play in shaping a legislation that directly impacts the lives of women. Our leadership holds the power to bring about positive change and ensure that women's health and rights are prioritized on the political agenda. Rwanda currently ranks first in the world in having the largest number of women in the parliament who are equivalent to 61.3%. Adams Quizera, RTV News, Kigali. The Ministry of uh, Finance of the Republic of Poland and the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning of the Republic of Rwanda has signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Tax Solidarity Program that will support Rwanda to increase domestic revenue mobilization, reduce tax gap and uh, digitize of, uh, the digitization of the tax system. Adam Squizera continues. Best agreements will enhance cooperation between the two countries in exchanging knowledge and experience that will lead to the development of a fair and efficient taxation system. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uzien Dajishimana, pointed out how these agreements will impact the taxpayers. We believe that this MOU will uh, uh, support our uh, fiscal policy reforms we are uh, targeting uh, uh, a significant increase in our tax uh, to GDP ratio. We have uh, a medium term uh, uh, debt strategy uh, and uh, uh, debt deficit, uh, fiscal deficit. Our plan is to uh, increase our domestic resource mobilization. Uh, we have already achieved uh, uh, a lot, but uh, a lot remains to be done, and we are confident that our cooperation in this uh, sector will uh, 
help us to achieve our, our, our goal. The Minister of Finance of Poland emphasized that through these agreements, starting from the development of tax system in Rwanda, it will also provide other opportunities for both countries in terms of expanding trade and other sectors. Uh, this is also very important to uh, know how we function on the tax uh, uh, area and uh, how can we increase efficiency in tax collection, how can we increase um, compliance of taxpayers and on one hand and on the other hand if we uh, have uh, an efficient tax system and uh, the, this system which is uh, with the high rate of compliance, it helps also competitiveness. Because for businesses, it is uh, much better uh, to have uh, rules and obey rules than to compete with those uh, uh, entrepreneurs, those, uh, uh, those uh, citizens who do not apply tax rules and have, uh, let's say, better competitive uh, position. This memorandum of understanding came in addition to the ones that Rwanda signed with Poland in May 2021 related to the cooperation in higher education, politics, and technology in security. Adam Squizera, RTV News. On Sunday, the Embassy of Egypt in Rwanda, Egyptians uh, who reside in Rwanda and their friends celebrated the Independence Day of uh, Egypt. They appreciate their country's collaboration with African countries and Rwanda in particular. We are very proud of our existing partnership in the, in the field of medicine and healthcare, as you have mentioned, Your Excellency Ambassador, with my heart center, a heart care and research foundation, a state of heart actually medical center that will contribute significantly to saving lives and reduce disability and death caused by cardiovascular disease. And tonight we are very fortunate indeed to be with Professor Doctor who is a, a former minister of health but also uh, the president of the health committee. We were discussing uh, just a few minutes ago how this heart center is going to be transformational for the country. We have also a very solid collaboration in areas of diplomacy. You did mention many of them, but I also want to mention the one, the capacity building we are having uh, for our young diplomats. We uh, are collaborating to make sure that our young diplomat benefits from your experience as Rwanda and Minafet in particular, we are building our Minafet Academy. So thank you for your support. In the area of defense and security as well, we value our cooperation, especially in terms of training and capacity building between our two armed forces. And we look forward to further strengthen our military cooperation in our shared efforts to achieve stability in Africa. This is Permanent uh, Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Clementine Mucheka, appreciating the good existing cooperation between uh, Rwanda and Egypt. Now, the Ambassador of Egypt in Rwanda, Rania Mohamud, uh, states that uh, Rwanda and Egypt share some history and the two countries will continue to have a good and uh, uh, fruitful collaboration. I came. I learned that the relations between Egypt and Rwanda was a historical relations. And even um, when I had the opportunity to, to present my credentials to His Excellency President Kagame, we were discussing the, 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 the excellent relations between both countries. And then I told him, I believe maybe it's 40 years, 50 years. And then he said, no, 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 no. You are not accurate, Ambassador. <laughs> I believe that we have very strong and historical relations and it, it returned back to the history when you have the pharaohs, the pharaonic period in Egypt and in Rwanda, since we are also a nation with, a, with how can I say, big history. So we were, there was a trade between both countries. And nowadays we are the grandsons and the granddaughters of these Egyptians and Rwandans, and we need to continue the strong relations. I believe also there is uh, excellent relation and coordination between our two presidents, President uh, Kagame and President Sisi. Uh, both of them, they are wise, they, are, um, they, they think so much in the African solidarity, 
the continent have been through a lot of obstacles during history, but that was history. We're speaking about today and tomorrow, and I believe when we have strong relations between both countries, and we will be like a role model for other African countries, this will help a lot to encourage our sisters and brothers, African sisters and brothers, to have hope, to be more developed. And now to other matters related to diplomacy and international cooperation. This Singapore uh, police chief, Commissioner Hong, we take a uh, points out that a cooperation between the Singapore police force and the Rwanda National Police should be based on building a stable relations. The Commissioner of Police of uh, Singapore is in Rwanda for a five-day official visit. The Singapore police chief, uh, Commissioner Hong Wei, was uh, received by his Rwandan council Counterpart, Inspector General of Police Felix Namohoranye at the Rwanda National Police Headquarters. He was briefed on the operations of the Rwanda National Police and its interaction with the public in various activities. The Singapore Police Chief Hong Wei and his delegation also uh, shared the, uh, with the Rwanda National Police on uh, how uh, they carry out uh, their duties in dealing with uh, criminal activities as well as uh, peace building activities in Singapore. The Commissioner of uh, the Singapore uh, police uh, pointed out uh, that uh, the partnership between uh, the uh, two police institutions has further been uh, strengthened. My purpose here today is to have uh, in-depth discussions and further develop the partnership with the Rwanda National Police. Uh, the Singapore Police Force and the Rwanda National Police, you know, has always uh, had these uh, warm bilateral ties and cooperations. But last year in 2022, uh, we took it to a higher level by signing an MOU in many areas of collaborations. And uh, the spokesperson of the Rwanda National Police, CP John Bosco uh, Cabrera, point, pointed out that uh, based on uh, the experience of the Singapore's uh, police, they expect to learn from them in a number of ways. Singapore, if it's a police, it's a police. Singapore has a police force that has been around for more than 200 years, while our police force has been around for 23 years. You can understand that ours has been around for a short time compared to theirs, so we can learn a lot from them, which is why the cooperation agreement was signed. But also his visit is very important to work together on how the agreement will be implemented. <laughs> The memorandums of understanding that were signed last year include the memorandum of understanding uh, highlighting uh, building institutions' capacity and capabilities in fighting all forms of uh, transnational organized uh, crime, cybercrime, trafficking in persons, online child sexual explo exploitation, money laundering, public security and public order, fighting and uh, preventing smuggling, and uh, trade in arms, ammunition and uh, explosives, among different other uh, MOUs. And this particular report sums up our tonight's edition on behalf of the entire news production as well as the technical team. Many thanks for sticking with us. Up until next time, stay safe and have a great evening.